just filled with peanut butter, just jerking off <laughs> what? Shit, what? peanut butter and shit. Get the fuck out, dude. I'm not kidding. Uh, I'm not kidding. Hey, I believe it, but that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So you end up being three and a half ounces. Yeah. I did, bro, bro, I'm telling you, bro. bro hey, you went to Shell. I and then tweaked out looking at the Dutches. That's where you're at in the story before you got kicked off. You're looking at the Dutch masters at Shell. I seen, yes, bro. I seen Dutches at Shell behind this guy, and they would come to me. They would, they were behind him, but they would come to me, and I would see the Dutches, you know, like right in front of my face as I'm standing there. And then they would go back, kind of like breathing, but a little bit more intense than like a breathing sensation, you know, and fucking. Dude, I sat on this dude's couch for five days. I couldn't really walk. I couldn't really, like, I could talk and I could communicate to people. Um, I couldn't eat. I couldn't swallow. Like, uh, I remember I tried to, like, take a sip of Gatorade or, like, water. One of my friends was worried that I didn't drink or eat anything. So, like, I tried to take a sip of, like, water and Gatorade, and it didn't make sense in my head. My brain kept telling me that, I don't do this. Like, um, it was like, I wasn't human. They were like, like, like my, whoever was guiding me through this experience was telling me like, don't like, you can't drink that right now for some reason. Like I couldn't eat at one point. I couldn't put like food in my mouth. Um, it, it was like, I lost, I got completely lost for like the first three days. So like the first three days, I was just to myself in a room by myself in the dark. I could see things, but there was nothing really there. Um, I, I, I felt like the literal feeling would be like if you took yourself and you put yourself in like a capsule of some kind and sure. shot off the planet Earth and landed somewhere very dark and very, um, very, very dark and very distant. Um, and out there, yeah, somewhere out there. <laughs> Did it help with your addiction though, like opioid wise or alcohol wise or whatever you were doing at the time? Uh, no, I don't think so. You're still, uh, I'll be there. honest with you. Okay, there's a weird part about that. Okay, and this is so fucking weird, dude, that you said this because I just talked about this the other day to my, to my girl. Um, after like because this story dude this story comes up quite a bit sometimes like my my friends will bring it up and shit because there's bad parts of this story too bro uh shit got weird i jerked off with a fucking uh jar of the one remember i told you i had a bunch of peanut butter jars like they lost me for about an hour in the upstairs bathroom fucking straight i, I guess i had one hand on the wall and I had my other fucking hand just filled with peanut butter, just jerking off fucking shit, peanut butter and shit. Get the fuck out of dude. I'm not kidding. Uh, I'm not kidding. Hey, I believe it, but that's crazy, man. I can Tony, remember. I can Tony, remember. My wife say, is listening. Ew, what the fuck, Tony? Tony, ew. Damn, Bird. She, oh, she fucking... Bird, I can remember getting up and saying to myself... <laughs> sexual acts, but well, that's not something I... That's why you don't eat. Uh, listening to he ate multiple ounces of mushrooms, so that's why we're saying Tell not me. to do that. All right, yeah. if you're watching at home, like, hey, should I eat three should, ounces of mushrooms? The answer is no, because you might end up with a handful of peanut butter, whacking it in the <laughs> other your, in your friend's time. apartment, too, at your boy's apartment with a jar, <laughs> a, a jar of peanut butter, or just a, an empty jar. What were you doing with the jar? Yep, I remember. I remember, dude. I remember getting up off the couch, and I remember saying to myself, "Like, I'm gonna try my best to go to the bathroom. Like, I'm gonna try my best to take a piss." But I couldn't find like the. I still had like a half ounce of mushrooms left, but I didn't know where they hid them on me. And I was coherent enough to. Was it crunchy or creamy peanut butter, peanut butter Tony? Crunchy or creamy? Cream. Oh, creamy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was what Righteous Monkey wanted to know. Thank you for answering. Continue. Yeah, dude, I remember I remember coherently saying to myself, I'm going to try to use the bathroom, and when I go into the bathroom, I'm going to try to find the rest of the mushrooms. So I brought the peanut butter. When I, when I started to use the bathroom, I took my shit out, and it felt so good that I fucking just started fucking going at it. 
Now, I don't remember doing it for an hour. They said I was in there for an hour. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember that, but I, I guess I was. Tony the Tiger there, man, fucking going 12 rounds. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here we go. After that fucking curveball story, that was a great one. Oh, I'm, I'm going to. Oh, oh go ahead, that's, Tony. that's what I wanted to mention. Was 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 to answer Dave's question was yeah finish that I, up for me. dude I fucking forgot for three full days that I was heavily addicted to Percocets and I think part of the reason that I jerked off so hard for so long was because I wasn't taking opiates for like seventy two hours straight so and I think and and I remember having to specifically tell them. I'm withdrawing right now. I'm going to have to get some type of perks and some type of blues and shit. And I remember on like day four, almost day four days into it, I had to like t- communicate with, with them and tell them like, dude, I'm fucking hurting, bro. Like I need to, I need something. I was in full blown addiction and for three, almost four days, didn't even think about it, bro. Damn. Wow. That's crazy, but it didn't help you, or you didn't come out with like some enlightenment, like like oh, I need to get on the clinic, or I need to do this, or it didn't help you like that. No, he it, just it, he just jerked off in a peanut butter jar. No, it, it didn't help him. You know what it did? It made it so I was never scared again. I was never scared again ever. Because everything made so much sense to me after that five, like, six-day period that, like, I was never scared to die again. I was never scared to, like, like all the fear, all my fear left my, my soul, you know? Yeah. Well, experience like that will do that to you, man. I mean. Yeah. It was like, it was like. Dude, you see geometry? There's geom there's shit. Okay, there's there's shit that's on the physical earth realm that we just can't see right now because we didn't take what's necessary to see what's actually here. Once you take the whatever the fuck is in mushroom, that's why everybody sees the same shit. When we all hallucinate, we all see the same thing. It is not a coincidence. Yeah, uh, I've heard in, the same thing with DMT. Wood. People see the same shit on DMT too. Yeah, dude. that little entities and in, in ge- geometrical shapes. Little That's mechanical why elves, elves, I've heard. Little mechanical elves and big spiders and shit. I don't know. Yes, but. the spiders are are real. There, there's big giant spiders that are real, bro. That we can't see until we take the the whatever the fuck is in that shit. I'm going to fucking end yep. it with a uh, Birdman drug story, mushroom story, Tony. I'm going to go way back before I was a dope fiend, but I was already an uh, everyday uh, oxycodone and Percocet abuser. Every day I was sniffing in the 30s. Uh, this is before I even knew, uh, knew you, Tony. We hadn't even met yet in life. This is way when I was doing that, and I needed to make some rent money up because I sniffed too much coke the night before and blown all my rent money, but, like, rent was still due. My roommate was going to get pissed, so I had to, like, you know, figure out a uh, way to get money quick. So what I came up with was people were selling mushrooms at the time. So I fucking got the word out and that, that, you know, I had some mushrooms. So uh, kid hits me up for like an ounce or something. I, all I did is I went to big Y, which is a grocery store in town. Uh, it's a oh. supermarket. <laughs> I went to the fucking supermarket. Fuck. I went to the mushroom aisle. I was all coked out. Like I was still like sniffing, you know, I'm in the farm. I like, go, I'm fucking about to get all the money back right now. I'm like, this is going to work great. I fucking went down there, fucking big Y, found the mushrooms that look closest to, like, what mushrooms would look like, and I fucking bought them, yo. I sold an ounce of big Y mushrooms for something, somewhere's around $200. I forget, maybe it was $150. I forget how much I charged for them, but I fucking got it. It was a, it was a kid, you know, uh, he used to live near my parents' house, too, back in the day. You know, Portuguese kid, Tony uh, Gill. I got him with, with the ounce of... Uh, Big Y mushrooms because Big Y was right near our houses, right? His oh house my. was behind mine, and our houses were right near Big Y. So I drove past his house, went to Big Y, bought mushrooms, and then tro- dropped them back off on the way back and sold them out of fucking supermarket oh. mushrooms and got the Coke money back, dude. 
Dude, he's such a good kid, too. I seen him the other day, bro. And he's... I'm not saying he's not, yo. I'm just saying that. Like, I fucking... I skied the dirty bunch. bird came out. The dirty bird came out. Yeah, I was on a fucking coke run. I was trying to get some out. He actually got stabbed in the hand uh, outside the bar fight. I got stabbed at, so he was out there uh, uh, fighting on our side. He got his hand cut by the kid who stabbed me that same night. Uh so sorry about the mushrooms. That was before he's before. So hey, he is a good kid because even after I skimmed on the mushrooms, he was still out there street fighting after the night I got stabbed. You know, so you know, kudos there. Yeah, yeah, he's a good he's a good person. I've always liked Gil. But that's the message of Birdman drug stories. Good people are not take no prisoners in the drug game. I had to make up a coke debt, so I was just selling supermarket mushrooms for two hundred dollars and oh, you know, I might give you a deal if you got cash. It was That's funny, too- yo. Motherfuckers be like, yo, front me, front me. Like, yeah, I can't front him. <laughs> That's too funny.